Hello, and thanks for your attention. My name is Clive Miller, and I've made this short video to detail some options for driving learning adoption and motivating behavioural change. Making use of learning depends on changing behaviour. If we don't do something differently, we cannot hope to benefit from the learning. The following common causes of behaviour change reveal ways that learners can motivate themselves to take advantage of their learning, and managers and learning professionals can leverage the same sources of motivation to support learner efforts and increase the impact on results. So the first of our common causes of behaviour change is measurement, monitoring and KPIs. If something is not measured, it can't be managed. If you don't measure the things you do, you won't know if you are doing things consistently. And without monitoring measurements, you won't know which things are contributing most to your results. Time and time again, research has shown that people's perceptions are unconsciously biased. So without measurement, we mislead ourselves. Measurement provides accurate feedback that commands our attention. It provides a score sheet that spurs action to do more of what works. So to motivate change, measure and monitor the impact of the desired behaviour. Key performance indicators in selling include the number of prospective customer contact events achieved each day, week or month, a weekly record of the contact event to sales opportunity conversion ratio, a monthly record of the contact event to close sale ratio, and the average sale value, and opportunity pipeline value. There are many more. So second in our list, peer pressure. When KPI measurements are shared or leaked, performance is judged by peers. It's unavoidable. If the data becomes known, people cannot help from forming opinions about individual results. And in any case, we are eager to know how our performance compares with that of our peers and others in similar situations. So if key performance indicators for individuals are shared, peer pressure is accentuated. Third in our list, changing priorities. If you don't have a plan, your priorities are being set by someone else. So make a plan and set priorities that will motivate the behaviours that you want to adopt. For example, all quota carrying salespeople should have a sales target achievement plan that details how they, they will achieve their sales target. In sales, you could prioritise one of these three aims above the other two. Work to increase the number of opportunities, or concentrate on increasing the average order value, or persuade customers to buy more often. Fourth in our list, mistakes. We are our own worst critics. We are first to blame ourselves when anything goes wrong. It is natural to try and deflect blame, yet merely thinking, how can I avoid blame, is an acknowledgement that we think ourselves culpable. Mistakes are pondered over and revisited long after everyone else has forgotten them. The endless review and what-if thinking rewrites the way we will react to similar circumstances in the future. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Fail forward faster, wrote Tom Peters. So accepting responsibility is not the same as accepting blame. If you are responsible for something that went badly wrong, your duty is to ensure it doesn't happen again. So fifth in our list is choice. It should be true that when we have learned a better way to do something, we automatically make use of the new learning. Unfortunately, this is often not the case, because whatever people do repeatedly becomes habitual and we hold on to habits. The new way represents risks. We might not be able to do it. It might lead to worse results. The old way feels more comfortable. The chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too strong to be broken, wrote Samuel Johnson. It may be necessary 
to invest more than the usual amount of forethought, planning and preparation to begin doing something differently. We may need to be more persistent to establish a new habit and avoid falling back into old and familiar practices. Adopting a new way of doing something merits a written plan. Declare what you intend to accomplish as a result of the change. Note any necessary preparation steps involved in using the new learning. Then schedule the actions. Sixth on our list, reflection and review. When you set aside time to review a plan and the actions it entails, you will find ways to improve it. For evidence of this, think of any piece of work, writing or presentation that by chance or design you have repeatedly reviewed and revised. Did the work improve with each reconsideration? Well, I know my work does. General Eisenhower, who led the D-Day invasion in the Second World War, leveraged this principle so much that his staff began complaining. He said in response, In preparing for battle I have found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. Seventh in our list, required procedures. Complex and difficult tasks are best achieved through careful preparation and rigorous execution of procedures. Some situations that benefit from carefully considered procedures include diffusing a bomb, carrying out pre-flight checks, aircraft maintenance, and extinguishing a major fire. If failure to complete a vital step would be catastrophic, then it is appropriate to publish and enforce a required procedure to prevent or minimise costly mistakes. And the degree of enforcement is usually related to the cost of a mistake. In your environment, what situations and practices should be governed by procedures and enforced by sanctions? High stake sales opportunities fall into this category. When unrecoverable resources must be committed to win high value business, the risk and consequences of failure warrant a greater level of diligence and governance. And providing there is sufficient will to communicate, mandate and enforce procedure, people will change what they do to conform. Eight in our list, changed attitudes. Attitude is a function of altitude rather than aptitude. Perhaps you've heard that before, or in other words, success or how high you fly depends more on mindset than ability. A change of attitude can happen in a moment. It's like opening a door and seeing an entirely unexpected vista. Having resilience and persistence in the face of setbacks is more important than having talent or skills. Willingness to build bridges rather than shut doors, to be open to possibilities rather than close to contrary perspectives, and to create value regardless of return. These are examples of attitudes that are difficult to nurture. Changed attitudes are like new horizons. They reveal unexpected opportunities. If you are stuck for motivation, experiment with new attitudes. Ninth in our list, change beliefs. If you know what to do and resolve to do it, yet don't take the intended action, you may be harbouring conflicting or contradictory beliefs. Beliefs are often deep-seated and resist change, yet they are not fixed aspects of personality. If you change what you believe to be true, you become motivated to change your behaviour so that it reflects your new beliefs. And just as events can change our beliefs, people can choose to believe different things. And once we make a new assertion, we can begin gathering evidence for its validity. If you want to change behaviour, examine and dismantle beliefs that sustain unwanted actions and develop or strengthen beliefs that motivate desired actions. Tenth in our list, perceived threats. Management by fear has been shown to be less effective than management by consent. Those motivated by fear do not perform as well as those motivated by their own or a shared purpose. Yet decisions by others, external events, unanticipated problems and other factors that cannot be controlled constitute threats that influence behaviour. 
For a threat to have more power, all that is required is for people to give it more attention. And finally, 11th in our list, trauma. Uncomfortable, painful and traumatic events force review and contemplation. They provoke strong feelings and motivate change. Of course, no one wants to deliberately experience a trauma, such as losing a job or getting demoted, causing a significant loss of money or being responsible for a loss of any value, possession or resource. Yet, traumatic events do cause people to change how things are done. Trauma is often a consequence of ignoring real threats. So, if you need to change behaviour to take advantage of new learning, find the leverage that will work for you personally, or that will support the efforts of individual team members. Links and tools and templates associated with this presentation help drive learning adoption and motivate behavioural change. So thanks for listening. If you have questions about this material or would like to discuss your needs, I will be pleased to respond or speak.